Good afternoon, we are Team Fly. We consist of Felicia and Ling Ying, who do hardware, and Yasmita, who does software. Today, we are going to introduce the following. Field 2, which includes line tracking, green square detection, speed bumps, and obstacle detection. Field 1, which includes rescue kit collection, rescue victims collection, evac zone, and exit detection. The logic map, as well as our reflection. Let's start off with field two. Beginning with line tracking, the basic movement of our robot is done using tracks controlled by a large servo motor on both sides, with the EV3 brick fixed on top. In front of the tracks are a pair of downward-facing high-technique color sensors that will detect the line for line tracking. The values that the color sensors return shows how far off the robot is from the center of the line. The PID, which stands for Proportional Integral and Derivative Controller, manipulates the steering of the robot based on the difference between the values of the two bottom color sensors proportionately. We use PID instead of step control, which is the usage of stepwise functions, as step control is not a continuous function and would cause huge yaw movement, which may still be able to complete the line track task but fall short in green square detection because the uneven line track from the big yaw movement would cause the sensor readings to fluctuate a lot. Whereas PID is a continuous function, where the greater the error, the greater the robot smoothly steers to keep evenly line tracking, giving a more accurate green square detection. The color sensors output RGB values, which stand for red, green, and blue. For green square detection, First, we check for double black, wherein both the left and right color sensors sense black. Then, the robot moves back to check for the green squares using the percentage green method. Basically, the percentage of green out of the sum of red, green, and blue of the left and right color sensors values is calculated. If the percentage of green falls within a specific range, it means a green square has been detected. This is a video of our line tracking and green square detection process. For the general movement, we are using tracks which provide more traction than wheels to go up ramps and cross speed bumps. Small wheels are also attached to the large motors to prevent the large motors from touching the ground when going up the speed bumps. Here is a video of our robot crossing the speed bumps. Next, let's take a look at obstacle avoidance. In between these two color sensors is a forward-facing color sensor, which is used to firstly detect the obstacle since it has a different color from the map. The ultrasonic sensor at the side will be used to guide the instantaneous turning of the robot and to determine when the avoidance turning motion will terminate. During the line checking run, when the robot detects an obstacle in front, it will move back and turn to get around the obstacle and return to the line. It continuously monitors the readings of the ultrasonic sensor, such that when the robot gets too close to the obstacle, it will turn away from it else it will continue turning around the obstacle. Once either the left or the right color sensor that detects the black line, the robot will return to its line tracking process. Let's move on to field one. Now we will be moving on to the next part of our run, the evacuation zone. The right high technique color sensor is responsible for detecting the entrance of the evacuation zone. So the robot knows when to stop the line tracking code and start the evacuation zone code. When the right, when, when the right color senses G value is higher than what it is when it senses white, it knows that it is silver. This was found from comparing the right color senses G value when placed on white and silver. Once in the zone, the robot will start to sweep the zone. The ultrasonic sensor allows the robot to maintain a fixed distance away from the wall, which is coded to become bigger and bigger upon every round in the evacuation zone in a spiraling motion until it reaches the center, ensuring it's able to sweep the entire evacuation zone. The forward-facing color sensor outputs R, G, and B values, 
it detects, detects the color of the balls and the rescue kit to collect them by comparing the RG and B values read by the sensors to the range of RG and B respectively for each color blue, silver, and black. If the, sil if the sensor readings are within the range for the specific color, the associated action will be taken. For the rescue kit, it will be stored in this center compartment above the medium model after it is deposited on our robot by the claw. The black wall prevents the cube from falling backwards and down the robot. Subsequently, the sorting mechanism will move the cube to one of the depositing slopes to deposit the kit with the victim. When the front-facing color sensor detects blue, it will pick up the rescue kit and put it into the sorting mechanism for it to be sorted, as shown in the video. This is the design of our claw, which utilizes the grab and lift mechanism. The advantage of this design is that only one model is required. When the medium model at the side turns, the claw first closes on the object before lifting the object up to the sorting axle. A H-shaped axle is used for the sorting. The rescue kit being slightly larger tends to land at the back black color part of the H shape, while the balls tend to land at the front gray colored parts. The yellow places at the end of the axle support the items and prevent the items from falling off the axles. The axles will rotate to the left compartment for the dead victims and to the right for the live victims, using a medium motor below. The items will be dropped off due to their momentum when the axle rotate at high speed. While the robot spirals in the evacuation zone, the forward-facing color sensor will constantly be checking for the presence of the balls. While it detects the ball, it also determines the color of the balls, which will be used in the sorting of the balls later. The cloth will pick up the balls and pass it to the sorting mechanism, which sorts them onto the different slopes. Before the deposition of the rescue kit and the balls, the slopes are initially facing downwards towards the front of the robot. When the robot hits the wall of the evac point, the beam below the slope will be pushed inwards and the upper part of the beam will push the slope and cause it to tilt downwards towards the back of the robot to drop off the items. Different length of the beams are used to ensure that the beams touch the walls at different times so that the slope tilts and drop off the live and dead victims at a different time. To detect the exit, which is a green strip, the percentage green method is used, similar to green square detection. Although technically both color sensors should detect green, taking into account the possible misalignment of the robots, even if either sensor detects green, it breaks the evacuation zone code and begins line tracking. To detect the end of the run, which is signaled by a red strip, we, we use the percentage red method, which is similar to that of percentage green, except now we take the percentage of red out of the sum of red, green, and blue. Once the red strip is detected, the robot stops, as shown in the video. Okay, so here is the first part of our logic map for both fields. And here is the second part of our logic map for both fields. So one of our learning points was that the previous gate method had a lack of a slope and the unevenness of the back of the robot would sometimes cause the items to get stuck and hence not be deposited. Sometimes the gate would also get stuck and wouldn't open. This new method of deposition is much more reliable and will deposit the ball when needed as only a small force is required for the slopes to tilt. Furthermore, the slopes are even to ensure that the items can be deposited even with the slightest tilt of the slopes. Previously, for green square detection, we defined a range for green by finding the minimum and maximum values for R, G, and B respectively that green lies in. If the sensors detected R, G, and B values that lie within the range, a green square would have been detected. However, working with the range for green meant that we had to calibrate the range of green every single time. The highly sensitive high-technique color sensors also led to many false green detections when using this method, as the range was different for different parts of the field because of the interference of ambient light with the light emitted by the color sensors. Percentage green, on the other hand, remains relatively consistent on all parts of the field and didn't require the calibration of green just black and white, making it more reliable and less tedious. When competing in the previous year, our line tracking wasn't precise enough, as it wasn't tuned properly. This led to us being unable to clear line gaps 
and unreliable green spot detection due to the misalignment of the robot. This year, we made sure to cheer line track periodically, such that it is continuously reliable. These are some of our learning points. From the technical side, we definitely learned more about the building of the LEGO EV3, Python coding, RGB color calibration, and gears bracing. Through this competition, we also learned about the importance of perseverance and teamwork, to work together with each other through the thick and thin of the competition. The flexibility and innovation required also pushed us to be more creative problem-solving individuals. We learned that delegation of workload is also necessary to ensure that the team functions efficiently and gets the job done. Overall, we are extremely happy to have participated in this enriching journey. Thank you. So some of our process can be seen on this GitHub link below. For anyone that's interested, please do check it out. Thank you.